GeoGuessr is a game where you are dropped into Google Street View in a random part of the world and your objective is to guess exactly where you are. You can play by yourself or enter the ranked mode where you duel another player to see who can achieve the most accurate guess. As with most competitive games, there's a ladder where you can compare your skill level to the rest of the players in the community. My goal was to create a dataset by requesting data from the GeoGuessr API so I could analyze and visualize the players on the competitive ladder and maybe identify some interesting trends. Today, I will show you the process of how I achieved this and also dive into some of my findings. First of all, there is no official GeoGuessr API documentation and the best I could find was this documentation by a guy named E. Fisher on his website where he details some API endpoints and the data that can be retrieved from them. The issue here is there's no endpoint listed where we can retrieve all of the data of a specific user, so I searched for another resource. I then stumbled upon this Python project, GeoGuessr Async, which allows interaction with the GeoGuessr API after providing your NCFA cookie. I dug into the code a little bit and found these two functions, get user infos and get user stats, which retrieves player data after just providing a specific player ID. This is perfect, now we just need to find a way to collect a bunch of player IDs and iterate through that list and request the player data. I did more research and found a reddit post from two and a half years ago where user Matt in the Sky was able to retrieve player ratings from the GeoGuessr API. He also included a link to his fetch script, which is just some basic Python functions that iterate through the players on the leaderboard and returns their name, leaderboard position, and respective rating, but nothing else. As of now, this API endpoint has presumably been discontinued by the developers as it no longer returns any data. However, when I started this project a few months ago, I was able to retrieve the top 250 players on the leaderboard and I did end up saving their player IDs. So I hit a wall. How could I collect a bunch of player IDs outside of the top 250 player IDs that I already have? Then I had an idea. GeoGuessr has a collection of curated maps you can play created by the developers. Each of these maps features a mini leaderboard displaying the top 25 players with the highest scores, along with links to their profiles. Upon visiting a player's profile, the URL of the profile page contains the ID of that specific player. Likewise, the URL of each map contains that specific map ID. So if we download the HTML files for all of these maps, we can extract the player IDs on the leaderboard from the raw HTML and begin creating a list. There is a helpful API endpoint slash maps, which contains all of the URLs of the curated maps created by the developers. I'm leaving out some of the code here, but there are a total of 122 developer maps and I retrieved all of these URLs. Additionally, there's an API endpoint slash browse slash popular slash random that I thought could maybe provide me with endless map IDs by repeatedly requesting random maps, but it seems to be limited to around 48 unique popular maps also leaving out a bit of code here. Once again, I hit a wall where I had no way to obtain new unique map IDs and in turn player IDs. At this point, we have 170 map URLs, so that will be 170 times 25 plus the top 250 player IDs I previously saved, which would be 4,500 player IDs minus any duplicates that appear across the high score leaderboards. This is a good start, but I really wanted to create a bigger data set. Some more time passed, but then I realized something. Each GeoGuessr map has a tab below the high score leaderboard, which recommends different popular maps that are similar to the map you are currently playing. Even better, each time you refresh the page, this refreshes the recommendations and gives you a new set of maps. So I looked through one of the 170 map HTML files I had downloaded, and sure enough, I was able to find the recommended map IDs. I was also jump scared by this thing at 2 a.m. when I was looking through some of the files. This means theoretically I could get as many map HTML files as I want. I'm limited a little bit by this time.sleep function which makes each HTML file download about 6 seconds per iteration, but I ran the script every night before I went to bed for a couple days and ended up with a little more than 8,000 HTML files which is almost 2 gigs of just HTML files. After this step, all I needed to do was iterate through each file and extract the player IDs as shown in this code. Finally, I iterated through all of the player IDs, which ended up being a little more than 140,000, and used the aforementioned get user infos and get user stats functions to request the data from the GeoGuessr API. 
I also set up a Kaggle dataset with a Jupyter notebook that will run and retrieve this data daily, and I plan on coming back to this data in the future to see how these statistics change over time. Okay, now we get to the fun part where we get to explore this data set and see what we can find. There are a lot of columns in this data set, 132 to be exact, containing a lot of information about each specific user. I quickly scroll through all the columns here so you can see what we are working with. There are a total of 143,646 users in this data set. Out of all of these players, there are 57 band accounts. Here is a table of some of these banned players with some interesting statistics. It is not surprising that a player would be suspected of cheating when they have a 99.5% win rate with over a thousand games played. There is also a prolific cheater on this list whose name is Snorlax. I will let this clip by GeoGuessr Pro Zigzag explain a little bit about this guy. Well, one of the most notorious players from that era was Snorlax. Basically, this guy had a habit of setting insane world records, but would never show his gameplay on Twitch or with other people in voice chat. And basically, just before he left the scene, the common consensus was that this guy was certainly cheating. Nevertheless, all his videos are still up, and his description reads, GeoGuessr Pro, don't hate, just appreciate greatness when you see it. So yeah, this guy was definitely not cheating. I ended up dropping these banned players from the dataset because I did not want them to be a part of the rest of my analysis. Next up, we have the most popular nicknames in GeoGuessr. Lots of users have the nickname Player or just iPhone or iPad. After that, it's just a bunch of common English first names. Here's a line plot of when all of these users created their account. There is a huge spike in account creations at the beginning of 2021. And here's a bar plot of which country these accounts were created in. Now let's dive into some data about the ranked system. 36.2% of the community plays ranked duels. We can also see that Country Battle Royale is the most popular multiplayer game mode with almost 8 million games played, and that Moving Duels is the most popular out of the 1v1 game modes. Now let's take a look at the competitive rating distribution. A majority of the community is ranked silver and competitive, and there are also a lot of players who are sitting right at the bottom of gold tier with a 675 competitive rating. For the rest of these visualizations, we will only be including moving duels as some of the other dueling game modes are restricted until you reach a certain competitive rating. Moving on to some box plots, we have the number of ranked moving duels played by competitive division. Average guest distance by division and win ratio by division. We also have a statistic I calculated myself, average number of rounds, by dividing the number of guesses by the number of games played. Finally, here is a scatter plot where on the x-axis we have the competitive rating and on the y-axis we have average guest distance in millions of meters denoted by the 1E6 in the top left corner of the plot. So the y-axis is 1 million meters, 2 million meters, etc. Next, we have a similar plot, but now the x-axis is the win ratio. And another similar plot where the x-axis is now the average number of rounds played. In the description, I'll include links to the dataset I've uploaded on Kaggle for you to explore, as well as the GitHub repository containing the code used to create it. I will also provide links to the resources I've referenced. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later.